just wanted to draw your attention to today's first reading as well as the responsorial psalm. Um, in, in the first reading, one of the things that's emphasized is, oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your prosperity would have been like a river and your success like the waves of, this, of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like the grains, etc., etc. In other words, following the Lord, following the commandments of the Lord's brings blessings upon us, makes us happy, makes us flourish, makes us prosperous. Same as in the responsorial psalm, those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow the Lord will be blessed. They will be enlightened. And, and, and we see this actually when we look at the history of the Jewish people, whenever they were faithful to God, they prospered. They were successful. They had the upper hand over their enemies. But whenever they strayed from the ways of God, misery and disaster befell them. And the same applies to us as individuals. When we follow the Lord, blessings come to us. Does that mean that we will never suffer, never experience any difficulties? No, it doesn't mean that. But God will always be there. So in general, our lives will be so much better off. Now, in today's gospel reading, it's basically our Lord is addressing the fact that many people rejected him, that they reject the message of our Lord. They reject the message of the John the Baptist also. And, you know, it mentions at the end that yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Basically, what it's getting at is that God does everything to try to convince everyone. He brings someone like John the Baptist, someone who's very austere, very penitential, lives in the wilds, you know, totally otherworldly. Everyone practically accepted him as a prophet, and yet they reject his message, especially his message about Christ. Behold the Lamb of God and how he encourages his disciples to follow our Lord. And then when it comes to our Lord, well, he's doing all kinds of miracles, even raising the dead, casting out demons. He speaks with tremendous wisdom, is able to evade any and every trap they lay for him. And yet they say, well, here is a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So you see what they're doing in reality is they're looking for excuses. Excuses not to change their lives. Excuses not to accept our Lord. And the reality is that often you and I, we tend to do the same things. We know God might want us to give up a particular sinful inclination. Or maybe God wants us to do something. Maybe even it's just a matter of saying our prayers at the right time. But we make excuses. No, it's not the right time. I've got to do this. This is more important than that. So no, the most important thing is God and following God, following his commandments, doing the things that God wants us to do. Yes, sometimes things come up, you know, emergency situations or out of charity. We may have to postpone our prayers or th something like that. But the ideal is that we try to live our lives to the best of our abilities in the way that God calls us to. You know, if you're somebody who's married, to be the best possible spouse. If you're a parent, to be the best possible parent. Or if you're working in the world, let's say you're a teacher or whatever you may be to be the best at that, to try to do your best. Of course, we're always gonna fall short. We're always gonna fail on certain occasions. We're all, always gonna have shortcomings and failures. But the point is we try to be the best that we can be and to live our lives as Christ would have us. And when we do this, we will receive an abundance of God's blessings and graces, and that will make us happier and it will make the people around us happier also.